went into our eyes and they made these big lumps right here and right here. And they went into our ears and they went up our noses and our mouths and our genitals and our anus and, and you know, God knows what these things were doing. Um, there was a time where, you know, I would walk around, these people would spray me with this stuff from a little black canister and, and laugh at me and then somebody else would say oh you're gonna die we're gonna kill you oh you'll be dead in 10 minutes i give him 15 minutes then he'll be dead and you know i'm walking around anyway so i go okay if i'm gonna die let me get a cup of coffee and a cookie so i go into this place and, and i get a cup of coffee and i said can i have a cookie and they, they give me the cookie it was very nice of her and and I buy the coffee, and some lady's in the line, she's like, they made him pay for the coffee? Oh, my goodness. And so I walk to go sit at the table, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to die in a few minutes. Um, and this guy walks up behind me, and he says in my ear, he says, this is a Pomeranian. And first you're going to get nauseous, and then you're going to vomit, you're going to have seizures, and you're going to collapse, and you're going to die. And then he opened up this little container, and this thing leapt out of this container and went, shoop right into the tip of my finger in in uh, where's the camera uh, in in here right in there and it had these little glowing eyes red eyes a nose and a mouth and it was the biggest one i'd seen it was like literally you know as big as as, as my thumbnail and it's looking at me out of my finger and i it hurt like hell and i go ah damn it and, um, and the guy had left, and the woman that said the thing about the, the cookie, she's like, who authorized this? And so now I'm in pain, and, and I leave the store, and I go home, and I get, uh, like, tweezers, and I'm trying to pull it out with tweezers, and it's not coming out, and it's still alive, it's looking at me, and I get a knife, and I'm, like, stabbing it with the knife, and it doesn't do anything it's still looking at me so i get a like a hypodermic needle or a sewing needle or something and i heat it up with a blowtorch until it's red hot and i jam it in this thing over and over and over finally i think it died because it stopped looking at me you know and then i pulled out what i could with the pliers and and i had to go to the hospital a couple days later because my hands got all affected because these bugs were in every pour in my fingers and I couldn't pick things up you know I had to pick things up like like you know with my palms and these people in the store were like oh he can't pick anything up because his fingers hurt and you know they they were literally following me everywhere I go and commenting on what I was doing what is he doing now oh he's trying to figure out what's going on oh, he's looking in his laptop to figure out what the bugs are oh he's trying to document his situation he's you know they were constantly talking about me as though I was uh, an object. Well, that's the other thing they did. They called me Baby Doll. Oh, that's Baby Doll. Hey, Baby Doll. And I'd walk down the street and people would be like, oh, yeah, that's Baby Doll. Yeah, Baby Doll. It said Baby Doll. And they would call me She. Oh, she's going to be a beautiful girl. And, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. They said they were going to eat me. They are going to eat my entrails. They were, you know, on and on and on and on. We're going to kill you. We're going to blow you up. Okay, let's set him on fire. Wait till he comes closer. You'll only blow his legs off. Give him a minute. Here he comes. Get ready to blow it up. You know, I'm in my storage locker, and they're threatening to kill me. And I'm like, so I go over to these people, and I'm like, excuse me. You know, if you're going to kill me, at least give me some good advice. You know, I, I'm dosed out of my mind on MK Ultra drugs and don't even know it. And they all look at me. This one guy's got a gun, like, behind his back. And they look at me. They don't know what to say for a second. The other guy says, um, after great hardship comes great ease. And I'm like, gee, thanks. And I walk away. And then these guys from up, in, I'm in the storage locker, and these guys from the storage locker come down, and he starts yelling at me, Timothy, don't fuck with these people, Timothy. Don't you fuck with these people, Timothy. And I'm thinking to myself, how does this guy even know my name? And I'm like, okay, yes, sir, I'm sorry. I just needed some shoes. Uh, anyway, I get my stuff together, and I leave the, the storage locker, and I'm walking around in the city, and I'm like, trying to buy some new socks, and I can barely think because my mind is so full of this MK Ultra stuff. And it's like you're tripping out, but you don't know it. And and I'm walking along, and I'm trying to buy water from one of the vendors in the street. And there's every every time I walk up to a vendor, they walk away from their vending cart. And I'm like standing there, thirsty, and there's all this water. And, and they're in my head. They're going, steal the water, 
just steal the water. Just take it. Take the water. And I'm like, no. And I finally find somebody that sells me a peach or something. And I'm like gobbling down the peach because, oh, because they had convinced me that food had no nutrition in it. And I had to eat it quickly because, I, I don't know, I went into Whole Foods one day and there's like 20 of these gang stalking people all in a row. And they're taking stuff off of the shelf and putting other stuff onto the shelf as though, I don't know what, you know. And then I'm standing in line and, and, and they're telling me, oh, don't worry, we're taking the nutrition out of the food, don't worry. And I'm grabbing food like from the bottom of the barrel trying to... And they're like, don't worry, by the time he gets to the cashier, we will have changed the food. And literally, they like, I have these granola bars or something, cliff bars, and, and somebody comes up and bumps me with something, bumps the cliff bars, and they go <laughs> in my hand. Literally, they go <laughs> turn into rocks. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then they go <laughs> and get all soft again. And I'm like, yeah, you know. Is this in my mind? Is this real? Uh, so I eat the cliff bars outside in the street, and the lady walks by, and she says, Oh, they're called cutters. They cut out all emotion and walks away. That was another thing the gang stalkers did. They would, like, walk by you, and they would say something. But it wasn't a whole sentence. It was only part of a sentence. And so you're, like, listening, and you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Well, what's, why are these people, what are they trying to tell me? Uh, I realized later, because I would sit in Starbucks and they would sit there talking about me for hours, you know, and I was trying to figure out, maybe I could figure out what's going on by listening to what they're saying, you know, they're talking about fixing the air conditioner in our room and how they had put water in my phone and how they had fixed the phone and on and on and on. Um, I realized that if you listen long enough to what they say, they would say one thing and then they would say the complete opposite. So I realized that, that you can't glean much information from what they say that you overhear. And I realized that anything that they say that you overhear, they probably wanted you to overhear, so it must be misinformation anyway. Um, I, I didn't realize that they were literally reading my thoughts and putting thoughts into my head until later when they sort of stopped all the crazy gang stalking. Um, we, we, we were forced to move. We, we stopped paying rent in this hotel because they were torturing us. So the guy took us to court, obviously, and, you know, it went on for a year and a half. And finally we moved out. We moved to this new place. And we still had all these crazy bugs, and they were still torturing us. And, and that guy made us move out, and we moved out. And that landlord stole almost everything we owned. He stole all our furniture, you know, the bunk bed, the, the, the air conditioner, the refrigerator, all the clothes, tools. Uh, monitors, big giant desks, computer stuff, video cameras we were using to broadcast things, you know, anything of value, well, not everything of value, but a lot of things that, you know, personal possessions that meant a lot to Petra, a doll that she had made by hand, it took her 10 years to make, and things, you know, important stuff, and they stole it all. Uh, it was a horrible thing. They, like, they literally, either they drug you, or they have the ability to use some kind of equipment machine and, and make you, it's weird, it's like you think you were thinking clearly. But when you look back on it, you realize that you could barely read, you didn't know where you were going, you weren't thinking clearly at all, and you barely got it. They did that to me and to her, and they sent me on a wild goose chase, and, and you know, we came back and they had changed the locks. It was a nightmare. And then they moved us into this other place where they said we could stay for a long time and we turned out we had to move out after a month there. And then, you know, we finally put what little we had left in storage and we moved to another place where they told us we had to leave after a week because the baby was coming or something. And they were, you know, all these places were getting bit by bugs and bed bugs and horrible stuff. And there's people outside talking about us and following us. And plus we're hearing like, like the voice to skull stuff where they talk in your head and only you can hear it. And, 